Welcome to another Infotech as I see it how to vid. Today's topic, how to set up NFS as another data store on a VMware ESXi 5.5 server. Now why would this be important? Well, let's say you're trying to cram for a job interview or you just want to keep your hand in and it's been a while since you've messed with data stores in VMware and you're looking around and thinking, well, I don't have a SAN available and well, just about anybody can set up a data store with local storage, but it's kind of more exciting if you can do it with remote storage. Now, mind you, iSCSI is probably the most preferable option in this case, but barring that, we can get a very similar experience just with a NAS box and a little bit of ingenuity. First off, what you're going to need to do is you're going to have to have ESX 5.5 installed. And that's going to open up in our credentials. And we'll get connected to that. And also, what we should do is go into our NAS management. I don't care what it is, I'm, ha I'm going to be using a, Z a Zyxel box. Um, it could be a Synology, it could be FreeNAS, it doesn't matter. As long as you have access to the management console of your FreeNAS box, you'll be doing golden. I'm going to go ahead and go into mine. And of course, because I don't have a certificate server running anywhere, and put in my super secret credentials here. Okay. Right in here. Uh, and for you command line junkies, well, you know, there is a way to get into SSH in this thing, but it's more trouble than it's worth. Anyway, once you get into whatever NAS box you have, uh, you got to make sure that you have the network service NFS installed. And here you see that I have installed it, and I've got a few shares out here. Now, what that's going to do is it's going to advertise its services out on your network, on your local area network. Um, in my case, I have these two shares here, and what that's going to do is when I actually go look for a data, a place for a new data store, I'm going to be able to actually attach to my little NAS box. So these are out here. Let's let's minimize this for now. Let's go into our host, our vSphere client here. Now you see I got my little host out here. Now there's no vCenter involved here or any kind of vMotion going on or any of that stuff. This is just a single host. But this is actually kind of interesting too because can say you want to use storage on a NAS or some NFS enabled device and you know you, you don't really want to go to the expense of say ESXi or start licensing anything or build huge SANs. I know this all sounds ridiculous at this point but okay there's a method to my madness. First of all, what we're going to do once we've configured our NAS uh, for NFS and set up a, an NFS share, then we're going to go ahead and go over into our client here and we'll go to storage. And you can see I already have one data store made up here. I'm going to add another data store. Now where it gets tricky is if you're not familiar with NFS, it kind of has strange convoluted paths. And it's entirely dictated by the storage device. Uh, if you can do cut and paste, it's great, which I know I just made all the CLI guys cringe, but bear with me. What I want to do here is I want to add storage. So I'll just click Add Storage in the client. And you see, we can have an iSCSI disk or a local disk. That's the normal way we do things. But we could also do NFS. And you see NFS, there's some NAS and whatever. So we'll just click next. Now, what it's going to ask is basically the ask the address of our uh, NAS box, since it's what I'm using to host NFS stores. So I'll go to it. Now the folder. You see this example shows this strange convoluted. The easiest way to do it, you should have this capability, or at least write it down or something. I just like to go into my management here pick the share I want to add. This is Zyxel, for example. Then I just kind of do a copy and paste here. 
So I'll just do that so I can get it. Then I'll go back into my vSphere client here, paste my path. You can mount it read only. I choose not to because it's an active share and I'd like to put VMs on it. And then I'll name my, v my data store. And this one's going to be test data store, if I spell store right. And next. Verify that's where you want to go. Click finish. Wait a couple of seconds and boom. We have our data store. And it's living on our NAS. We can browse it. We can put things into it. We can take things away from it. Now, the nice thing about this is, say you have a NAS box that can do NFS stores, but also do SMB or whatever. You can run into an issue real quickly trying to move stuff on that NAS into your data store because it's a different file format and it's 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 not going to be an easy process, especially if you have to use, say, the computer you're working on as a conduit between two folders on one device. That seems kind of counterintuitive, and unless you like to spend 15 hours moving 50 gig of files, it's really not uh, advantageous. Um, in the Zyxel box, for example, I have the option here to actually create shares. If I go to my share management, anything that's on my particular Zyxel box, I can make a share for. So, for example, I have a share here called NFS, and if I look at that share, I can actually see that I have stuff in there that I can access this way. Well, I can actually do a copy and paste maneuver here. However, you're managing FreeNAS, whatever, however, you're managing your device, you know, CP, RCP, SCP, whatever you want to do. But you can actually, if you can move it from one share to another share and vice versa, it's going to make it a heck of a lot easier because you're doing the operation on the box and you're not getting your PC involved in the process. So I would strongly recommend that. Figure out that functionality. I figured it out in my Zyxel here. Anyway, once we have this, you have the capability to treat this like any other NFS data store. For ex example, uh, these two server VMs are actually living on the data store that's local to the drive or local to the to the host. So let's see if we can get any information summary here. So if we look at the settings for this, we can see that this one lives on data store one. Well, my Windows 7 VM here, if we look at the summary on that, we see this actually lives on Data Store 2. Well, Data Store 2 actually is our another NFS share here. And you could see the data I store, blah, blah, blah. And we can go ahead and browse it. You see there's my, there's my VMX file. And my VMDK logs. I haven't done any snapshots in this yet, but you see everything is right there. Also, note that you still have, you can upload files or download, which means transporting VMs is pretty simple. If you have it somewhere else, even if you have it local, you could upload or download from this point. But also remember, if you're doing something that's on a network share, it's going to come through your machine to do that transfer, which means you're adding about a factor of 100 to the time it's going to take. So it's best to have something that's already living on, a, on an NFS share that, or work within your, your NAS box, which in my case is the Zyxel. But I'm going to go ahead and start this, this uh, VM up. See, now it's up and running. Now, the thing you may notice is because I'm going through the network, because this is a network share, this is an NFS share in the NAS, performance will take a slight hit compared to, of course, local storage or fiber attached SAN or whatever. But it's still usable. I would strongly suggest that you're not going through multiple jumps, that you're on the same network segment. And I'm not just talking about IP network segments. I mean the same physical network segment. 
Uh, the same way that, that an iSCSI share and an iSCSI array should be on its own network, so should the NASBOX, or at least be physically and electrically, we'll say, connected to your VMware host. So you see I've got my VM here and my super secret password here. And it'll log on. And again, you get a little bit of performance hit because remember, you're pulling all this across a network connection. That's the downside. But the upside is you have access to storage that isn't even local. This may be basic in kindergarten time for a lot of VM veterans out there, but it's going to make it a heck of a lot easier if you want to set up a little more robust VMware deployment just to play around with in a lab, or say you've got a small business situation going on. Maybe you, can, maybe you only need one house and you've only got a few servers. You can go this route. Now, I don't know about you, but lab environments were designed to be broken. And I'm going to simulate a catastrophic failure of this data store that our little running VM runs on. Now, you see this Windows 7 thing that's running. Well, let's say, well, you know, what happens if I unmount the store? Well, let's see what happens. Let's say, OK. Well, guess what? It's not going to let it happen because it's got something mounted. OK, well, that's completely within our control. That kind of dummy proofs things. Ah, but what if I go to the source? Now, let's see what happens. What I've done is disable the NFS server on my NAS box, and you see that all of a sudden these are dark. Is our VM still running? Let's see. Kind of hard to believe it would be, but it appears to be. So we're looking here, and we're looking, and eventually this should fail because it doesn't have access to its drive anymore. By the way, even in an enterprise environment, this is one of the best ways to tell if your host has crashed or your data store has crashed because your VM may still run because it's, it's still loaded in memory. But when you try to do anything that hits storage, it's not going to work. You see, nothing here. Nothing's happening. Can I even do a shutdown? Nope. And it's eventually locked up. So we have effectively screwed this up. And that's what I wanted to do. Now, here's the question. Let's go back. What happens if we re-enable it? Bring our shares back up. OK, the shares are back up. This according to my NAS box. We'll refresh the view. Okay, the data stores are back. Let's browse them. You see our VMs there. But will it work? And voila. We have our VM back. It's reconnected. So it's kind of fault tolerant that way. It kind of put it into suspended animation. So that kind of answers the burning question. So technically, yes, you could have your storage go offline or your data store go offline. Stuff that's working in memory will continue to work, but the minute it hits storage, it's going to freeze up. But it won't necessarily crash the VM. So it's always been kind of a burning question with me, and now you know. That's about all the fun I think we're going to have for this video. But hey, thanks for watching. We'll be talking to you.